Hi there, and welcome to my first video in quite some time, hopefully the first of many. And I've decided to kick back off by looking at working with LiDAR point cloud data, or indeed any type of point cloud data, um, within ArcGIS Pro. So quite some time ago, I did a, a couple of videos looking at working with raster elevation data based on, on LiDAR. Uh, so I thought it was about time I filled in the gap on point cloud data as well, particularly as it's actually become much easier to work with in the last few years. So probably of, of more interest to a, a wider range of people. So to kick off, um, if you've got your LiDAR point cloud data in LAS.LAS format, you can literally just drag and drop your data set into ArcGIS Pro just like any other layer. Um, now I've got a, a local scene set up here. It will appear in a, a 2D map as well, but obviously you'll be limited to a top-down view of the uh, the data. You may have noticed when I first dropped it in, briefly it appeared as just a kind of semi-transparent red cube. That is the, the kind of loading display. And if it stays in that perspective, if you if you keep seeing a, a kind of translucent red cube rather than the points that I'm seeing here, essentially that means the, the point cloud you're trying to view is too big for your, your video memory. So in that case, what I'd recommend doing is zooming in a bit. And as you zoom in, eventually you should hit a point where actually your computer can start to, to manage that data set. Um, and even if it is displaying zoomed out, as you can see with mine, it degrades the, the resolution. So actually, as you zoom in, you will start to get a more detailed um, view of the point cloud as it loads the, the full data set. So that's if you've got .las files. If you've got .laz files instead, um, then ArcGIS won't necessarily read those automatically, so you may need to use the convert last tool. Um, so you can input your LAZ data set here, um, set a target folder, and output an LAS data set. So, you know, it's just a case of, of running a conversion first before you can add that data set in. So let's take a look at our data set now. It's there, so by default, ArcGIS will visualize it according to elevation. So if we open up the symbology tab, we can see, so red being higher elevations, blue being lower elevations, we can see the range, you can do all the usual um, settings you would, pick the color ramp, change the stretches, that kind of thing. Uh, we do have a number of other visualizations we can use. In particular, we could look at intensity if your data set's got that. So that's how much light was actually reflected, how strong the reflection of the, the pulse was, as well as um, the, the height of it. Um, we can look at the return number. So I'm not going to go through all the options now. Um, you can have an experiment. As you can see, by default, we'll always see first return most clearly at the top but if we zoom in around the the vegetation layers in particular we'll see that the first return comes from the the top of the trees the top of the vegetation but we do have two three four even five returns in some case cases um, lower down below those and the other one that's particularly of interest is classification so LiDAR points are often classified to indicate the, the type of surface they're being reflected from. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, this data set hasn't been classified. So everything shows up just as class one unassigned. Fortunately, it's very simple to classify that data within ArcGIS Pro. So if we go to our geoprocessing pane and search classify LAS, then we come up with a number of options. So pretty much the first one that you're going to want to run is classify last ground. So starting off by classifying the ground points is always a sensible thing to do because several of the other classifications actually rely on having those ground points in place um, 
in order to be carried out successfully. So we just select our data set. There's a couple of different selection methods depending on whether we want the algorithm to be conservative, aggressive, um, or pick up ridges. Um, I'm going to stick with the standard one, and we can also choose between the first generation and latest version of the detection algorithm. So there's a bit more information on those if you mouse over the, the info icon, or you can have a look at the, the documentation on the Esri website if you want to know a bit more about those. If you've got ground points already and you're just trying to refine them, you can tick the reuse existing ground box. Um, and the DEM resolution essentially allows you to speed things up by only looking at a subsample of the, the ground points. So, you know, it, it essentially it gives you sufficient points to generate a, re a DEM of the resolution you, you enter here. But I'm going to leave that unticked and go with the maximum resolution. The one other thing that's worth noting at this point is that all of these classify last tools will modify the existing data set. So if you're working with a point cloud data set that's already got classifications and you don't want to risk losing those, then you might want to, to duplicate the data set first because this, this doesn't create a new layer. Um, it does modify the existing layer, a bit like overwriting an attribute table for another, another GIS layer. Um, we can choose to also classify noise points um, and set a processing extent if we just want a subset. Again, I'm not going to worry about those for now and just hit run. So this will take, in, in my case, probably a minute or so, um, probably a bit less to, to carry out the, the processing. Obviously, how long it takes will depend partly on the the power of your computer and partly on the, the size of the point cloud data set that you're you're trying to process. So you may have to be patient depending on, on what you're working with. And there we go. It disappears for a second as it <clears throat> reloads the updated data set. So if I go back to symbology and ask it to add all values, um, you'll see we now have ground points as well as unassigned appearing on our, our classification. And now we have that, we can also start to make use of another visualization tool, which is if we right click on our data set, we can choose to filter it. Um, so we now have the option of filtering just ground or just non-ground points within our layer. So unsurprisingly, ground points will give us a much flatter layer, removing vegetation buildings and such like. Um, and just non-ground points will give us the, the vegetation, the buildings, and everything else. So what if we now want to try and classify those remaining points? So we head back to our geoprocessing toolbox. And the next one I'd recommend running is classify last building. Uh, because I've discovered that if you attempt to classify vegetation first, it will tend to assign vegetation classes to the buildings and the classifier last building won't then uh, redetect them as, as buildings. So in terms of the go with go with the ground first, then buildings, and then as we'll come on to in a second, classify by height, which will add in elevation layers. So we'll pick our same data set again. Um, we can set Minimum rooftop heights, minimum roof areas. Again, choose some settings for the, the classification method we're using. Uh, again, we can reuse existing building points if it has been classified and we're just trying to refine that. And we can also identify if this is photogrammetric data. So it's been produced by, say, a drone um, taking photographs rather than a, a laser scanner. We can tick the box and it will process things slightly differently. Uh, we can also choose to classify above roof and below roof points and set a processing extent if we if we so wish. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the defaults for now. Hit run. And there we go. So once again, I'll need to go back to symbology, get it to add all values. And with a bit of luck, there we go. We now have a building class um, added to our 
data set. Now it's worth noting um, there are kind of standard numbers for all of these classes. So you'll see one is unassigned, two is ground, and then it's jumped straight to six for for building. Oh, and I've realized that I've still got this filtered to just show non-ground points. Let's change that back to all points. So we should actually see what we're looking at. There we go. Um, we can see it has picked up the buildings here, uh, residential area over here. So we now have our data set showing ground points and building points. So most of what's left is vegetation. And if we want to classify that, then the, the final tool that I'm going to use for now is the classify last by height. So again, input our data set. It has to have ground points already to do this. Um, you can use a raster surface, but frankly, if you've got a decent point cloud data set, why would you? Um, and it classifies these into class three, low vegetation, class four, medium vegetation, and class five, high vegetation. And you can see by default, it's going with 5, 25, and 50 meters. You can modify those values to whatever makes makes most sense to you. So we'll hit run once again. And there we go. We should now have a fully classified data set. So once again, we'll add values here in the symbology pane. And we can now see our ground points, low, medium and high vegetation and buildings. And obviously that means if we want to kind of extract those individually, use them as a basis for further analysis, we've now got that classification there ready to filter out the relevant points. So <clears throat> that's most of what you need to know really to get started with the basics of working with point cloud data with an ArcGIS Pro. The only final thing I'm going to mention is the create last data set tool. So if you're working with multiple point cloud data sets, so you've got it broken down into tiles, for example, and you want to be able to process all of those in one go rather than having to cycle through everything individually, then the create last data set tool allows you to select multiple files. Um, so I'm going to select the one I've already been working with and a neighboring tile just to stop things from taking too long. Set an output name and you can see, <coughs> excuse me, um, this produces a .lasd file. So it doesn't create a new last file. It doesn't pull in all of the data from the originals. So it's not you know, creating huge files. It's more like creating a virtual raster. So this just creates a file that then references both of those original data sets and allows you to work on them as if they were a, a single data set. Um, you can set the coordinate system. We can create projection files if we, if we want to. Um, but once again, I'm gonna leave everything as the default. Just hit run. And very quickly, you can see we now have um, a second tile loading alongside the, the original data set that I was, was working with. Um, and there you go. As I said, that kind of covers the, the basics that you'll need just to get your point cloud data in there, ensure it's classified and start being able to, to visualize it. And they really are a, a powerful tool. Once you've got to that stage, there's a lot more things you can do in terms of detecting objects, extracting features from the, the point cloud. Um, but those are topics for, for other videos. And probably the next thing that I'll do is just quickly show you, once you've got your point cloud, how you can then convert that into a raster DSM or DTM. Um, which can then be useful for a whole range of other visualization and analysis tasks. So I hope that was useful. Um, if it was, please do like and subscribe and keep an eye out for hopefully some more videos in the not too distant future.